Alright, in this video we're going to start number theory, and we'll start with divisibility because we need to understand what divisibility is in order to go through everything that would be introduced in an introductory discrete math course. So, here's the definition of divisibility. We say A divides B, and this line here is the division sign, if and only if there is some number C such that A times that number C is equal to B, where A and B can be any integer, but C has to be a positive integer. So as an example, we know that 2 divides 8. So this means that 2 times some number C is equal to 8, and we know C is equal to 4. We then check, okay, is 4 a positive integer? Yes, therefore 2 divides 8. What if I said, okay, well does 5 divide 13? Well, we can check this out. This means that 5 times c is equal to 13, which means c is equal to 13 over 5, which I will just rewrite as 2.6. And is that a positive integer? Uh, the answer is no. Therefore, we know that 5 does not divide 13, which we just show with a little line through our division sign. So, Although it's cool to check out and solve these problems for some number, just to see if there's a nice little piece of division in there, that's not really an important application. What's a little bit more interesting is proving some theoretical stuff. So I'll do a proof for you, and then the next one we'll do together, and it'll be fun. So here's the thing. If A divides B and A divides C, then A divides B and C, or B plus C. So how do we do a proof like this? Well, we assume the antecedent here, which means that A divides B. So we know that A times K is equal to B. Again, we don't know what K is, but we know it's a positive integer. And A times J is going to equal C, because A divides C. So we want to show that A divides B plus C. So what we do here is we assume b plus c. Okay, and this is going to equal, well we have some equivalences here, so b plus c is going to equal a times k plus a times j. That's good. Now we'll factor. So we're going to factor out the a, so we'll get a times k plus j. Now to show you exactly how this definition works, I'm going to make some substitutions here. Again, this isn't required, but I'll make them just to prove a point. Really, we're done right here. But what we'll do is we'll let m equal to b plus c, and we're going to let n equal to k plus j. So now we have that m is equal to a times n, which is the same definition of saying that a divides m. But we know that m is equal to b plus c, therefore a is going to divide b plus c. So there's a proof. This is all you really need to do these proofs. And that's a cool little theoretical thing. So if we know that, say, 3 divides 15, and ooh, that's not a nice 15, and 3 divides 9, then we know that 3 is going to divide 24. That's pretty cool. Anyways, here's a proof. If A divides B and B divides C, then A divides C. Let's see if you can uh, do this. Pause the video, try it, and I'll be back in a second. Alright, this one's not too bad. We do the same thing as before. We say, okay, well, A times K is equal to B, and B times... Ooh b times j is equal to c. Again, we assume this stuff here. So k and j are some positive integer. Then we assume c, and we know that c is equal to b times j. Now let's substitute b in there. Okay, so now b is equal to a times k, so this is a k times j. Now what we'll do is we'll just move the parentheses around. So we have a times k times j. And we know this is some number, it's some positive integer, because k is a positive integer and j is a positive integer. Therefore, when they multiply, they will be a positive integer. So 
we can conclude from this that A divides C. So that's pretty cool. For instance, if 3 divides 6 and 6 divides 18, then we have that 3 divides 108. I really hope that's 6 times 18. It's, it's been a while. I think that's right. It does regardless, so it's all good. But that's two ways and two different proofs you can have. Of course, there's a lot more proofs. In fact, I really suggest you do a fun one, which is if A divides C and B divides D, then A, B divides C, D. In fact, that might not be true, so I don't know. You might want to check it out yourself. But I do want to point out one interesting property here, and that is... Here's, I'll, I'll draw a little thing here. This is A, this is B, this is C. We have some nice relation arrows here. A divides B, B divides C. Then we find out that we get a nice little transitive line here. So this division is transitive. Now, another interesting property of division, which I just want to make sure is not there, okay, is that it's also reflexive since every number is divisible by itself. But is it symmetric? And, well, the answer is no. In fact, it's going to be anti-symmetric. In... It's not, okay, it's not necessarily anti-symmetric. It's asymmetric because in the case where A divides A, it's also true that A divides A, but... Some interesting properties there, which you may remember from relations. So, do what you wish with that information. Perhaps something like this may come up on a test. It's always fun to take information from two different sections and on an exam ask a question about how they relate to each other. It's pretty cool. But those are some basic division proofs. Now we're going to move into the division algorithm. And what we say is, okay, let A be an integer and D be a positive integer then there are unique integers q and r, such that a is equal to dq plus r. So basically this means is any number has some divisor plus a remainder. And you can break it up like this. Now, this is important for a later algorithm, so I'm going to demonstrate this in this video. And then when we get to the extended Euclidean, the extended Euclidean algorithm, You'll see this in a little bit more detail and what it can do. But here, as an example, 53 can be written as 3 times 17 plus 2. So we see here that D is positive, and we have some unique numbers, Q and R, which are 17 and 2. So again, this can be done for really complicated numbers. You take 1999, well, if you wanted to, you can write this as 1 times 1,000 plus 999. In fact, this should be fairly obvious, but you will see that r is going to be greater or equal to 0, and it's definitely going to be less than d. Or should I say it's going to be less than, or less than q? Depends what you want D and Q to be. But what this means is that, oh hey, if we have 1 times 1,000, then clearly our remainder can't be greater than 1,000. Otherwise, well, we'd have 2 times 1,000 instead of 1 times 1,000. So that's the division algorithm. And this will be used later to find the greatest common denominator. I won't talk about it now because there's a whole video on that. But first we need to do modular arithmetic, which will be in the next video. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will ask, answer them to the best of my abilities.